So we will slowly start talking about the STP model. Uh, STP stands for segmentation, uh, targeting, and positioning, right? So we'll, we'll try to sort of understand uh, this, this part, because this is where you, okay, so you have a strategy, you've done your market research, you have a strategy, and now you're really trying to sort of position the brand or, or the product, right? Um, so let's let's try to understand what is what is segmentation. Now, segmentation can be okay. Uh, this is another slide where it, it kinds of it kind of breaks down the STP model. Uh, so you have market information, uh, and then you do a market segmentation, and you target a particular segment or segments, and then you position your brand or product uh, and you know and, and and that that leads you to make certain decisions right uh, example identifying similar groups or customers identifying which groups of customers to aim for creating a concept to appeal uh, to the target market right and then you uh, then you run the campaign. You do whatever the exercise that you have to do. Uh, another sort of you know, like very specific example is done market research uh, and uh, you have segmented the market as male, female uh, consumers of skincare products aged between these, these different age groups. And then you select female consumers aged between 18 to 25 as your target market. And then you position the skincare products as essential for, in this case, self-respect, right? Uh, possibly because in your market research, you found that uh, females uh, between 18 and 25 uh, give uh, high, or, or they feel that it is important uh, to sort of take care of their skin uh, as, as a way of uh, self-respect, right? Creating self-respect as an intrinsic thing. These are all qualitative things, right? Remember qualitative research. So you would have spoken to females in a sample of females in this age bracket and you discovered that, you know, most of them, they feel that, you know, keeping their skin healthy and, and uh, I don't know, you know, so, some people want uh, whiter skin, uh, some people want clear skins and, you know, it, this is a very controversial area anyway, right? Uh, skincare and makeup and all of that. Uh, but and, and it, is, it is a very, very lucrative uh, market as well, uh, huge uh, in terms of products and innovations and sales and uh, usage, uh, global brands, local brands, you know, huge, huge market, uh, skincare products. So, um, uh, so you found that you know they give a lot of value. So the reason why they do that is because they it's a way of respecting themselves, <clears throat> creating self-respect. It's an intrinsic thing, uh, and and it is it is something uh, that gives them confidence uh, in, in the society. So if, if that is the case, if if you found that that is why they want it, then you position your product, your skincare product. Uh, as something essential for self-respect, right? So you, that you're using that that uh, psychological need uh, of that particular market segment, right? Uh, and to do that, you come up with you, you enter into a creative process either you, either by yourself or through a creative agency and ad agency to create the the campaign, and then you know you use whatever the channels to to push it. To this particular target audience, right? If this particular target audience is watching a certain uh, 
teledrama or or if if they are watching a certain uh, if, if they are following certain uh, celebrities uh, then you would sort of get you know brand endorsements uh, celebrity positioning and all kinds of stuff you know how, how, how you do that is that's that's the creative part you know that, that's your genius all right uh, so for an example now let's say that you are a retail shop a uh, clothes shop of somewhat fashionable clothes um you you introduce uh let's say a very you know light material uh, uh colorful um short dresses you know a, a, a series of short dresses for for ladies and then you you do your marketing mix and you promote it and you sort of differentiate that as a as a unique product right now what will happen there is that if if you didn't have that product before you you will find that uh, a new group of maybe young uh, females walking into your shop and buying that product right did somebody want to ask a question okay okay so you you differentiated the product you introduce a product and you you position that product and then a new segment comes to that product right a new segment will come and buy that product so that's 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 the product differentiation approach towards towards market segmentation but there's also a market segmentation approach where it's the other way around you first look at a market segment and then you work you know sort of reengineer of what kind of product that you need to offer so an example is that you will you will segment your market and find and see that uh there are uh, you know uh, somewhat elderly ladies uh they don't like to wear you know short dresses and light dresses they want long longer skirts and you know sort of heavy dresses uh to wear i don't know to evening functions or social gatherings or whatever that is that is their choice so you you identify a market segment and you understand their needs and then you work your way back and then you introduce that product uh Uh, as a new offering in your shop that that is called a market segmentation approach right okay is that clear yes sir all right now how are you going to segment the market there are different ways I mean, there are broadly there are two ways. You can use the breakdown approach, uh, the breakdown approach is like this. So the break in in the breakdown approach, what you do is you assume that in the market there are individuals, right? So many customers, potential customers, consumers, and you believe that. Uh, the, these these individuals have similar uh similar likings right so there there are individuals who will like a particular type of food there will be individuals a particular type of uh food and so on right whatever the criteria may be you 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 assume that there are people with similar characteristics similar likings or whatever variables and then you you segment the market based on those criteria the other other approach uh is where you 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 don't uh 
break down the uh, market like that, but instead you try to look for similarities among the individuals of the market, right? So, so kind of you know slightly different approaches towards. Um, uh, do you understand what I'm saying? So in, in, instead of you picking a variable and then sort of trying to segment individuals into different groups, the other approach is it's the same thing. You, you're segmenting the market at the end of the day. But in the other approach, what you do is you try to uh, find what are the similarities 